it's Chris from Live CA. Today we're going to be talking about creating expense reports in Receipt Bank. The first step in actually creating your expense report is sending your receipts through to Receipt Bank. There's a number of different ways you can do this, but the easiest is submitting your receipts using the Receipt Bank app for your iPhone or your Android phone. The app lets you take a picture and then just submit it through into the app where Receipt Bank will actually extract as much data from the receipt as it can. So it makes your life a lot easier. Let's have a look at that now. So I've got the app open here and we're going to we're going to add a new receipt in. To do this, you can actually just click the camera button at the bottom of the screen and it launches your phone's camera. So I've got a receipt ready to go here. So I'm just going to line it up, make sure the lighting is good, that I can see the whole receipt in the image. And then I'm just going to snap a picture. So it, Next screen, it gives you a little preview of what the actual image looks like. You want to have a quick look at this and make sure that you can make out most of the information on the receipt, that it's clear. Um, it's always a good idea too to click the edit button in the upper right hand corner and stick in a quick description. This gives the person reviewing your expense claim a little bit more information about why you're actually claiming this expense. So in this case, let's say it's office expenses for new office. I'm going to hit save and then it brings you back to the preview screen and I'm going to hit submit for processing. So you can see this one's uploading and now it's in, in processing. That means Receipt Bank is trying to extract as much data from the receipt as possible. It takes a, an hour or two and then they'll have the receipt ready to go to be added to your expense claim. So a few other tips when you're adding or taking pictures of receipts, you want to make sure that the lighting is good, that you get the whole receipt in the image. And if you ever go out to eat and you've got a meal receipt, make sure that you take a picture of the actual itemized receipt from the restaurant. So the one that says cheeseburger, fries, and a Coke. And then when you pay for that on your debit card or credit card and you get that little slip, you want to take a picture of both of those receipts in one picture and then submit that through together. That way you get credit for the tax, the tip, and the actual amount of the meal and everything's good to go. So next, to actually create the expense report, we're going to have to hop over to the Receipt Bank web app and that's where we'll pick up next. Now that I've submitted my receipts through to Receipt Bank, I've logged into the web portal where I can actually update each receipt and create my expense claim. First thing I'm going to do is review the receipt to make sure that the information that's pulled is accurate. I'll do this by clicking the blue receipt text in the line of the first receipt. When I do that, I'm brought into the full detail that Receipt Bank has pulled from the receipt. The left hand side of the screen, you can see that the actual image of the receipt is brought in. So what I'm going to do is just review that the date, the supplier, the currency, the total amount and the tax amount match the information that's found on the receipt. Then I'm going to update the category and add a description in. When you add your to category or choose your category, you want to try to classify what type of expense is being reimbursed. So in this case, it makes sense that it's office expenses. The next piece is the description. It's important to enter a description in for each receipt so that the person approving your expense claim knows why you're claiming this as an, an expense to be reimbursed. Once you've entered that information in, you can scroll down to the bottom of the page and click add to expense report. In this case, I'm creating a new expense report because I don't have an existing one. So we'll say new report. Report four, you'll click this drop down and you'll choose your name from the list. Then the date. So this is the date that you're claiming expenses up to. So I'm going to just say today's date, click add. So once I do that, I'm brought into the next receipt. So I'll do the same thing, review the date, the supplier, the currency, the total amount. In this case, there's no tax um, needed because it's a US receipt. And since it's a US receipt in US currency, there's an additional field, the Canadian currency. So what you're going to want to do is pop open your own credit card or your bank card, um, your statements, and have a look at what you actually paid and enter the amount in here. So in this case, I actually paid $16.45, so I'm going to update that. So the Canadian amount is what will be reimbursed, so it's important to make sure you fill that out accurately. Next, I'm going to choose my category. Since this was for a meal, I'm going to choose the meals and entertainment account. Then I'm going to add in my description. meal while traveling to trade show. Click out of it, it saves, good to go. We'll say add to expense report. Since I already have an existing expense report, I'm gonna add this receipt to that one. Click add. 
and I'm brought into the last receipt. So we'll just review the information, date. In this case, I did pay $21.80 Canadian. So even though it's a US receipt, the Canadian amount is what's being reimbursed. So that is accurate. And I'm gonna update the category from general expenses to travel. Uber receipt to, to trade show. So now that that information is updated, I'm going to say add to expense report, existing expense report, and add. Once you've got all your receipts added to your expense report, you'll see the only item left in receipt bank is the expense report itself. You can click into it to review any of the items. So the left-hand side is the actual expense report image. The right-hand side is all the images or all the items that have been added to the expense report. If you need to make a change to an item after you've added it in, you can click into it by clicking the blue ID text and make that change. So I actually was charged $23 and 45 cents. And then it saves as soon as you click out of the box. You could click all back to your expense report. And you can see it updates here. The image takes about five minutes to update. So don't worry that that isn't correct. If you leave it for, for a few minutes, it'll update on its own. The, but the, the totals here are all accurate. So once you've done this, you can actually just leave your expense report in Receipt Bank and it will be reviewed and then paid out on the next pay run. Before we sign off for the day, I'll leave you with a few final tips about creating expense reports in Receipt Bank. When you're submitting your receipts through to Receipt Bank, you should be submitting any receipt for any company expense through to Receipt Bank. So it doesn't matter whether it's paid for on a company credit card, a company PayPal account, a personal credit card, or a personal debit account. Send those receipts through to Receipt Bank. However, the only items that should be added to an expense report in Receipt Bank are items that are paid for on your personal card. You can leave the items that have been paid for with a corporate card or corporate PayPal account in the inbox and they'll be handled during the monthly bookkeeping process. For receipts that you've received by email, no need to print them out and snap a picture using the phone app. You can actually just forward that, that email into Receipt Bank and Receipt Bank will pull the receipt from the email for you automatically. Everyone has their own unique email in email address that they can forward these emails to. To find yours, log into the Receipt Bank app Click the add items button at the top of the screen and then choose email. This will display your personalized email in email address. So just forward any receipts that you have to this email address and then Receipt Bank will take it from there. That's it. That's the down low on creating expense reports in Receipt Bank. Thanks so much for your time.